Hello everyone, welcome to today's video about multi-threading, multi-processing and a sync queue. Today we are going to compare and test the performance of all those different methodologies. Our basic example would be a function that would scrape content from a web page and saves this content into a file. But before we dive into the code, let's take a moment and see what the theory says. Multi-threading and multi-processing achieve what we call concurrency. Concurrency is defined as being able to execute multiple tasks at the same time. However, this is misleading because we don't execute tasks exactly at the same time. What really happens is we have one processor that switches between tasks while it's waiting for another task to finish. For instance, when we hit an API, and we are waiting for a response, we don't do nothing, we switch to another task and thus we improve the performance of the code. Using threads is a way to break a program into smaller chunks and execute them at the same time. Unfortunately, in Python, memory management is not thread safe and we have what we call the global interpreter lock, which allows only one thread to have control. And this is why we cannot achieve parallelism but instead we achieve concurrency. Multiprocessing, on the other hand, indeed allow us to execute parallel tasks because it's not limited by the global interpreter lock and we actually spin up completely different processes. Having said that, let's test the performance in a real life example. This is the normal version of the code. We are using perf counter to calculate the performance then we call the main function, and in the main function, we loop from 1 to 20, calling the write content function 20 times. We pass as parameters the file name and the page number. Inside the write content function, we do a get request, and using context manager, we open a file and we save the content into the file. Let's run the code now. As you can see on my terminal, we are calling the writing content function sequentially, first for page 1, then for page 2, then for page 3, etc, etc. As you noticed, it's not very fast. It takes about 20 seconds for 20 pages. But we are not doing anything difficult, we just get the content from a web page. So it's not very efficient. Moving on to the async version, the first thing we need to do is to import the async module, the asynchronous I.O. files and asynchronous I.O. HTTP modules. Then we need to set up the Windows select or event loop policy because I'm on Windows and we use async.run to run our main function. Inside the main function, we'll, we use list comprehension we loop from 1 to 20 and we point to the write content uh, function here, passing the file name and the page number as parameters. We use asyncio.gather to unpack all the tasks and the await keyword to actually run, execute the code. Inside the write content function, we have to create a client session using the IO HTTP module and the async with keywords because we are always using context managers. The same for the request. And then we have to open asynchronous the file using the IO files module and the async with keywords again. Now we have to await for the response and then await for it to finish writing in the file. Let's run the code. And it took about 1.5 seconds. That's quite a significant improvement, I think. As you can see on my terminal, we are not calling the writing content function sequentially this time. First, we called it for page number six, then for page one, then for page five, then for page three, etc., etc. So when we are using asyncio, we are able to switch tasks while we are waiting for a response. And this is why we can improve the performance substantially. In the next version, we are using threads. We have to import the threading module and create threads. It's pretty easy to do that in Python. We have to instantiate the thread class and specify the target function and actually pass the parameter we want. 
After that, we are able to start the thread. Now, you can see here, I have a list uh, where we append each thread. The reason we are doing that is because when the thread completes its execution, we have to join it back to the main thread. That's why we look through this list and we join the threads back to the main thread. If we don't use the join function, then the thread will never terminate and it will continue using our resources. Eventually, we will run out of memory and the computer will, will crash. Let's run this version now and test the performance using multi-threading. Again, as you can see on my terminal, we are not running the code sequentially. And it took about 2.1 seconds, which is a bit more than asyncio. They say asyncio is a bit faster, but as you can see, the difference is quite small. Moving on, we have the multiprocessing version. First, we need to import multiprocessing and actually instantiate a process. The syntax is exactly the same like with threads. We instantiate the process class to create the process. We specify the target function and the parameters. We start the process and we append its process to a list. And then we loop through this list and we join the processes back to the main process. Let's run the multiprocessing version. And it took about 2.6 seconds. A bit more than we expected since we are running the tasks simultaneously. But I suspect this is happening because when we create a separate process, it takes some time. And since we don't have any heavy calculations, any intense CPU bound activities, it's, there is no point of using multiprocessing. It's better to use async or multi threading in this case. I created a bonus version here, just out of curiosity, I wanted to combine multiprocessing and async together and see what happens. So we need to add an extra function here, the run async function. We pass the file name and the page number, we send the event loop policy and we are using asyncio.run to run the write content function. In the main function now we spin up different processes, passing uh, the parameters and targeting the run async function. And we start the process, of course. Now, as you notice, the main function and the run async function are normal functions. The only async function is the write content function, where we are using the async module. Let's run this version and see what results we get. And it took 2.8 seconds for it to finish. Not that great, you would say, because actually it took a bit more than using multiprocessing alone. So the combination might not be the best solution. But I suspect this is happening because we are using multiprocessing for input output activities, which is not the best scenario. The theory says that we need to use async and multi-threading when we have intense I.O. bound activities and multi-processing when we have intense CPU bound activities. So let's add a heavy calculation here using the pro function. We pass the page number as a parameter plus 200k so we have a big number and according to theory multi-threading and async won't make any difference in this case because we are not switching between task, tasks. We are performing, we have to execute only one big task. On the other hand, using multiprocessing, we, we should notice a big difference compared to the other versions. This is the async version with this extra heavy calculation. Let's run the code and see how long it takes. I suspect it will take much longer than not having it. And it took 7.2 seconds. Not that bad, actually. Let's test the multi-threading version with this extra calculation. And we are still waiting. And it took 6.6 .6 seconds. So a bit better than the async version. Not that bad. And last but not least, the multiprocessing version using this extra calculation. Let's see what happens. 
and it took 3.1 seconds less than half actually than async you and multi-threading which proves that using uh, multi-processing for cpu bound activities is a great choice let's run the bonus version because i'm curious to see the results and see if it's better than multi-processing alone and no it's not it took 3.6 seconds versus 2.1 seconds than using when we used multi-processing alone so it seems that the, the combination of async and multi-processing is not that great it doesn't provide great results compared to multi-processing alone i'm a bit disappointed to be honest but hey in a nutshell in multi-processing the operating system decides when to switch between different tasks in async the task decides when to give up control in multiprocessing, we run multiple tasks on different processors at the same time. This means multithreading and ACQ are more suitable for input-output activities, while multiprocessing is more suitable for heavy calculations. I hope you got something out of this video and you got a better understanding of those concepts. If you liked the video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel.